it's nice to be at a distance. And there's so many people that would just benefit from this and so many horses would, would let down, put their head low if you just got out of your horse's space. The problem is, get out of my space here. The problem is people don't establish a halt from the start. Now, as I walk, I might have to lift to slow him down as I walk. I might have to reach up with the rope and send a wave at him. Back up a little bit. If I lift and get tall, I'm conveying a sense of liveliness, energy, possibly movement, but good. It's looking pretty good. Right about here is where a lot of people say, hey, or they say it a little different. They say, hey, and they yell at their horse for... <laughs> oh, he goes, I think I'll back up. And I say, yeah, I'm going to stick with my, I'm going to stick with my idea there, pal. As so long as I can bend his nose to me, he probably would never kick out at somebody because the thought's not there. Now, if he's in a position to kick out at you, if his head goes to the other side of his body, away from me, it's quite possible that he would kick out. You might not even realize you're there because he forgets. Oh, come on now. Don't come. There we go. Find that back up. Hope that makes sense that you keep that horse's attention towards you. You keep the bend towards you. The thought of kicking out won't be there. It's not the action or the movement that I think about. It's the mental state that the horse is in. So if I need more life, let's get more life. I'll get tall. I'll ask him to trot a little bit. I realize he's still... Uh -huh, that's funny. <laughs> Just going to stick with him. Oh, interesting. He's out of view. Drive him forward a little bit. There we go. Leave him alone. Get forward above all. Come on forward. That's really what you need to have. Come on forward. I'll leave you alone. Life is good. Come towards me. Move the hindquarters. Notice how to reach up. Offset the haunch. All that is is stepping the inside hind leg under. Turn towards him. Actually, there I might let him settle in. He says, I want to float over there. I'll say, what, if, what about giving me this side? Now, what about the idea... Something I'd really like right now would be, could I get him to step forward and over as if he were leg yielding almost, if I were riding? Because, boy, that would feel good for me because that would give me space when I circle. Notice I used the rope sort of on his barrel where your leg would be. That's looking pretty nice. He did move over. I think you'll notice more arc, natural arc in the neck. As we go, I'll walk out of there, walk out of the center. I'm probably getting pretty far away from you right now in that view on your screen, but I want to work with them on the other side of the ring. So when I work a green horse or a young horse, preferably it will be done on both sides of the arena so you can see both sides. Yeah, notice he kind of comes towards me. I, I realize. He, there, we'll move him forward. His nose goes to the outside. I'll move him forward a little bit. Step around. That'll draw his attention. Bring the hindquarters to me. I need him to see this side of the ring. Good. He's, he squared up nicely. Keeping my attention on him. Letting him see both sides of the ring, both directions, left and right. I would like to get a canter here at some point, and maybe he, maybe it'll be here. Yeah, there you go. Nice. A little kick action makes it more exciting. I bent his head towards me. Let's try that again. Got a little crossfire canter. I realize it's hard to see. Try this again. Let's get united. I have a little crossfire, so a disunited canter. 
Let's try this again. Yeah, oh boy. He's a trotter. Let's see here. Okay. He doesn't even see the jump standards. Look at that. How's his awareness? Once his awareness comes back to his feet, you'll have, there's a united lead with the tail swish. Now, had I not, I'll bring him to me. He doesn't know this yet. I'll cut an angle. And he's got to bring his mind back around because there it is. Yay. Look at that. His mind came back. Let's go down to this side. Ah, come for the ride. Good. All right. Yeah, so I actually like these lively horses, but when they kick back or kick out, a horse like this, eh, he's just sort of, that's old life experiences and way he's dealt with things, and this looks like it might be his better lead. We'll see here. We're getting in and out of frame. It's a little tight in here. Ah, it's funny because his, he's so unaware of his feet. There it is. I thought he might get the lead. I'll get out of there and walk away a straight line. Give him lots of room. Oh, the head came down. What a nice horse. And the hull. Come on, buddy. I want to back up. I'm staying tall. He doesn't understand that when I stay tall, keep his life up. When I bring my life up, you bring your life up. Let's see that leg yield, that uh, enlarging the circle or stepping over to the side. I step forward and over, and I, I step in the direction I want him to go. I get tall, and I press in. It's looking all right. The other thing is if I could fall back to my heels, that's excellent, meaning at first I step towards him. I step forward and over. I'm stepping in the direction I want to go. Then when he finds it, I've got to watch it on this side tension. Ah, he started to lift his lip up, so a little tension. So when he finds it on the right side, he steps over. I'll stay where I'm at. So I'll initiate the movement by stepping forward and over. I am moving towards him. I am moving my feet. Then when he gets it, I'll fall back a little bit. Oh, careful now. Don't. And he says, I want to face you. He said, I, that's what I did earlier, and that worked. I said, you're okay. You just leave me on your side. He says, this is my off side, or this is my right side. No, and actually, we just translate what horses are thinking because in reality, he's just a little nervous about me over here, so he just is protecting himself. His tail swishing is telling you, that there is a lack of clarity in understanding what I want. It'll come through. Things come through. It takes time. A little change, licking and chewing. You'll hear me talk about licking and chewing and mental changes. And A mental change brings on a physical change because the whole horse is starting to figure things out, come through. Now, if I reach up with the curry comb, <laughs> as he comes, he kind of stepped into me anyway, so I just reach up and brush a little and... And then I'll take that hindquarters. I'll step to the rear, or step to the a straight line away from him. I'll do this again. I'll take that forehand over. I'm rubbing a bit. I'll step t past the hindquarters and bring the front end to me. Let's do this again. Bring that hindquarters over. Bring his front end to me. All right. He's changing direction, but at least he's trying. So let's just sort of go with him on that. Let him feel like he's good. He can relax. Step to the hind. Take the hind quarters. I won't have to repeat this lesson after today that much. Notice the sensitivity level there. Ah, uh, yeah. He's real sensitive. So just brushing him. I thought the metal curry would be a good thing for him just to get, get okay with that. A little sensitivity sensitive horse. I use the curry on his barrel and even that is um, hard for him right here. He looks pretty good. Notice I can always bend his head to me. Let's bring that front end through a little further. Let's bring that front end through. It's like a turn on the hindquarters right there. It's distracted. Looking to the side. So it takes a lot of pressure to bring him back as well to me. Look at that. It's a lot. It's a lot of work to bring that mind back to me. Boy, riding. 
makes you wonder if he'd be really kind of heavy in the rain, but I'm just guessing. Never been on him. He's got the potential to be quite the horse. He is put together well. He's got a bit more of that refined nose, refined head, and body. So I find these thoroughbreds to be a little more energetic, just partly because of their build, their body. But that I like that kind. I don't know that I can step that rib cage over. I was feeling like with that tail swishing and with them pressing in there, I was feeling a little squashed, a little compressed. Let's get that hindquarter, or let's get him stepping all four legs over here. So am I grooming him? Am I doing groundwork? The answer is yes. I'm doing both. What would he learn being cross-tied right now, swishing his tail and or being tied? See those human, those are human conveniences. Hope that makes sense. I'm not going to do, there is a little change, a little lick and chew. Forward motions coming through. He's even stepping over for me. He's like, Jack, I think I know what you want. Now he looks to the outside. I might walk over here. We want to take care of that. It's getting a little annoying to me. Now I realize it's just what he knows, and it's just his life experiences. But it's annoying to go step to the side and automatically have him look to the other side. He needs to feel for me. That was nice. It's nice. Keeping, keeping me more mindful. Use the curry comb as a blocker. Curry comb has some advantages. It looks a little better. Obviously, the head's away, though. Look at that. Every time I go to the right side, he looks to the left. Every time I go to the left, he looks to the right. Boy, oh boy. It's going to get better, though. It's going to get better. All right. I can I notice him behind me. He's looking around, but he's being somewhat mindful. He is uh, kind of working his jaw in a good way. Right here, I just you notice he's just going to run right through me. Come on, buddy. I'm here too. There we go. There he's thinking about me. So I bring my posture down, I walk away, bring him to me, draw him in. Look at that. Helps him. He goes, oh, I like it better when I look at you and you walk away. Or <laughs> when I put my head towards you and smell, I like this. Now I lost him, see? Bring that front end through. And what I'd like to do is brush him with this hard brush carefully. Horses like this, they don't... I want your attention, buddy, so... See how I bumped his side? And he'd use that cautiously. I'm always able to bend his head towards me. I'll try to not men mention that too many more times, but I'm here. Look at me. It's enough of that. If I were riding him, I'd be using that left leg. Is he nervous? Yes, he's lively, but I'm still here. And the other way I look at this is this is great training for him because he's under pressure. Horses only as good as they are when they're under pressure. Look how much time I take, though. People say I don't groom. That's funny, because looks like I groom a lot. <laughs> okay, stay with me, pal. Eh, that's not the answer. See, I, that's what I mean. Some of these older, well, I should say some of these greener thoroughbreds, these six, seven-year-olds and stuff, They've got the mind of like a two-year-old sometimes, at least when they're nervous or when they're lively. He can't help that. He's not dumb. It's just he was handled in a primitive manner on the track. So I hope that makes sense. It's primitive. On a, tr on a race track, they're going to get it done. Time is money to race, race people and some show people too. Hind quarters. So he's always, I always have an, there, felt good right there. He kind of considered me a little more. See, so whenever I brush, he thinks, oh, look to the outside. It's my permission to look, look away. It's no. 
Maybe I brush them on the move a little bit. I've got to get under that belly good because the girth is going to have to get put on.